Today we truly have a speaker that needs no introduction. Because I've been here all service. But who are you? to decide I am, I can accept that, I'm part of the one, and in this incarnation, I'm Dick Dingus, which I'm enjoying very much, especially I'm enjoying being part of Fellowship of the Inner Light, I'm enjoying being your speaker today. Someone asked the speaker, how long did it take for you to prepare that message? And he said, all my life. <laughs> well, these are the words of Jesus, which he spoke to his closest followers. It comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 15. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. I would like to talk with you this morning about these words, but the place to begin is with another familiar phrase or statement by attributed to John. He wrote, God is love. I'd like to try to understand that more fully. God is love. Love can be understood as a noun. And if we think of God as a noun, God is the capacity to bless, to sustain, to cause to thrive. But that's not quite perfect to think of God only as a noun. I'd like instead to think of God as God is love, as a verb. God not only is the capacity to sustain and bless and make happy and provide the needs of all living things, but God does this. God is an action. God does this continually. There are two places that I find it as I read in the New Testament. The first is words of Jesus. He says, God causes his rain to fall and his sun to shine on both the just and the unjust. In other words, God blesses everybody all the time. That's the nature of love. Here's another example. James, the brother of Jesus, wrote that all good gifts come from God who is the Father of lights, in whom there is no shadow of turning. In other words, God gives everything good continuously and never changes. God, love, is a verb. I'd like you to picture God as a verb. continuously blessing everything, sustaining with the energy that is God, all that is. God is happy. God is joyful, even, as God sustains and causes all things to thrive. God is engaged in a dance of love with all things. People seek to feel closer to God. God says, let's dance. To start dancing with God 
you simply begin loving as God loves, continuously and unconditionally. Then you will feel God's joy. You will feel Jesus' joy. Jesus danced with the Father. He kept in perfect step. He loved as the Father loves. He loved for the pure joy of loving. He did what the Father said. He taught. He healed. He addressed the needs of those around him. He never turned anyone away. If you had a problem, you could come to Jesus and he would fix it. Blind, he spit into the ground, he made mud, put it on the guy's eyes, he said, go wash. The guy could see after that. Lame, pick up your bed and walk. Dead, <laughs> Lazarus, Come forth! <laughs> Dancing with the Father enabled Jesus to do anything, even to rise from the dead. Jesus set an example for us. We can live joyfully and ex extend blessings to others by making Jesus our dance partner. Of course, if we dance with Jesus, we will also be dancing with the Father. If you've been sitting on one of the chairs around the dance floor, if you've been a wallflower, this may be your dance. Dance with Jesus and with the Father on the inside, but invite someone else to dance with you on the outside. Pick your partner. The imagery is to pass along the joy of dancing to someone else. You will make yourself happy. You will experience the life-giving flow of God, who is a verb, within yourself. You will overflow to good health. When George Ritchie was in the army, he was part of an American force that liberated a German prisoner of war camp. And he wrote about it in his book, Return from Tomorrow. He had a near-death experience. He wrote about that too. But when he was in the army and visited that prisoner of war camp, he saw all the prisoners, how skinny and almost dead they were. But among the prisoners, he observed this one man who looked like he had just come in from the outside. Perhaps he had been sent in to be a clerk and to make final records of those who were there. No, Richie found out the man had been there all along. He looked like he was thriving and he was thriving simply because he chose to love others, love those around him. Love even his persecutors. Being a channel for the flow of God, of love, is good for the soul. A little known psychologist received a referral from a renowned psychiatrist of a woman who was depressed. She was even suicidal. She was on heavy medication to help her cope with her condition. The psychologist wondered to himself what he could do to help this woman if the psychiatrist could not. He decided on this plan. He would meet with the woman weekly, but she would have an assignment to complete between meetings. The first assignment was to help someone every day and then to write about it. 
She was to write about how she thought the other person felt when they were being helped and write about how she felt after having helped the person. The following week, they met and they talked about her experiences. The second assignment was to help two persons a day for the following week, and so forth. Before long, the woman began to feel better about herself. She wasn't such a suicidal risk. The psychologist was in consult with the psychiatrist who prescribed the medications, and her medications were reduced. And this story just continued for, from there. Her con health continued to improve. Extending unconditional love is healing for the soul. And if you do this, you will be making someone else happy. You will be doing your part to engage someone else in the dance of love. You will be doing your part to change the world. One day, humankind will experience the oneness of love. Everyone will recognize that God is in each and that each is in God. There will be universal respect. Collectively, we will make sure that everyone's needs are met. We are on that journey now with each dance step we take. The goal is to get everybody dancing. The way is to ask, may I have this dance? Yes. <laughs> Henry Heimlich waited a lifetime for the right tune to be played so that he could ask that question. He's the doctor who created the Heimlich maneuver. This is the medical procedure in which a person's airway is cleared when it might be blocked by food or another article. The procedure is to get behind the person and you put your fist underneath their rib cage and then you reach around with your other arm and you <gasps> and the residual air in the lungs which the person normally can't force out is forced out and with it comes whatever is blocking the throat at age 96 dr heimlich was sitting at the dining table in the nursing home where he was a resident and the woman across from him stopped breathing because she had some food caught in her throat. Dr. Heimlich had created the maneuver, but he had never used it. <laughs> he stepped behind the woman, set his fist, grabbed it with the other hand, <coughs> pop, he saved her life. May I have this dance? Whom will you ask? You will see someone. The Holy Spirit will talk to you. And then another person will start dancing. It will be just a matter of time before we all dance into the oneness of love. This is the plan of light and love in the great invocation. This is thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is shalom from our Judeo heritage. Shalom means more than peace. It means peace with justice. Peace because everyone's needs are met. There's no need for anyone to grab or to be hostile. This is fire the grid. Shelley Yates saw that each one of us is a hexagon in the grid. And when one of us finds joy and is grateful, then the hexagons all around that one are fired.
It's like throwing a ping pong ball in the room where all the it's filled with mouse traps that all have ping pong balls on them and it hits one and it pops to all the others and pretty soon all of them are fired. There is hope. The outcome is going to be good. Jesus is the Lord of the dance. Let us sing together the hymn that has the same name. Bruce will lead us. It's on page 24 in your hymnals. Let us stand as we sing. Thank you. 